I welcome you to the Cathedral Church of St. Peter and St. Paul on behalf of the Episcopal Church. This cathedral was chartered by Congress as the nation's house of prayer for all people. It also serves as the seat of the Episcopal Church. The doors of this church are open to all God's children, particularly those whom the world has forgotten or ill-used. The nation has gathered here for state funerals and to mourn those dead by violence, by violence of war, acts of terror, or natural disaster. Martin Luther King Jr. preached his last Sunday sermon here. This is a place of prophetic challenge as well as a place of peace and healing. This sacred space has been a peaceful refuge for other faith communities, including a synagogue congregation and an Arabic Orthodox community, and most recently for Muslim Friday prayers. This is a good and fitting setting for our lament over the martyrs of Armenia and an opportunity to remind the world of the atrocities of which human beings are capable. The genocide in Armenia a century ago awakened the world, yet we have not yet ended the perpetration of this evil. All human beings are created in the divine image and all are equally valued in God's eyes. We must continue to shout never again and to build peace with all whom the world rejects. Last Sunday in California, a woman told me of her family's quest to build a hundred homes in Armenia in memory of relatives who died a century ago. Her family members will go there this summer to offer their hearts in peace and their, heart, their hands and funds for building shelters of justice. We gather here tonight to ask God to take our lament over senseless violence and death and turn it to resurrected hope. May God send us to build peace here and across the world, and give us all the grace to see the image of God in every human being. Blessed Lord, who dwells on high, Blessed as well is the glory of your greatness. You created the lights on high and from the heavens you shined light throughout the universe. You created the sun to give light to the day and the moon and the stars to give light to the night as well as the light of the lamp. You are the light to be praised, the holy and first light. Darkness flees from you. Let your living light dawn in our hearts, Lord, and together we shall say, blessed is your glorious holy name. And we sing blessing and glory to you, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and always and unto the ages of ages. Amen. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, 
but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Holy. Kaguchon amenetsun. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice President of the United States of America, your Excellency, Mr. President of the Republic of Armenia, Your Holiness, Your Eminences, Your Excellencies, dear clergy, ladies and gentlemen. The centennial of the Armenian Genocide is defined by three key words, and these are to remember, to remind and to claim. These three dimensions and challenges of this landmark event are closely interconnected. First, we remember the martyrs of the Armenian genocide. In fact, we always remember our genocides in our reflections and actions. Our martyrs are integral, inseparable, and existential parts of our daily life. 
they are living present in all aspects and spheres and expressions of our individual and common life. With their spiritual and moral values and with their human ideals, they sustain our life and they become the guiding post, the guiding lines of our common life in this world. Indeed, our martyrs are the blood of our church and the sustaining power of Armenian life. Second, in commemorating and remembering of our martyrs, we remind the world the sacred legacy of our martyrs. In 1915, a well-planned and systematically organized genocide took place against the Armenian people. Today, some people may, for geopolitical reasons, refer to it as a great tragedy. Others may depict it as massacre and simply as relocation because of war time. But what happened in 1915 was a genocide. Even if the term genocide was not yet part of the vocabulary of the international law, what happened against the Armenian people was by its very intent and method a genocide and the genocide is a crime against humanity. Last but not least, in remembering our martyrs and reminding their sacred legacy to the world, we claim justice. In fact, I believe that according to the teachings of all religions, justice is a gift of God. And rejection of justice is a sin against God. Justice is also the core of human rights. Respecting human rights means rejecting injustice and promoting values of justice. Any governance, any society, that is not just sustained by values of justice, becomes a source of evil, a source of intolerance. As Christians, we believe that reconciliation is integral part of our Christian faith and vocation. But cheap reconciliation generates further injustice. True reconciliation implies accountability. True reconciliation means recognition of genocides and reparation. Furthermore, reconciliation means accepting the truth. As the Bible says, the truth frees us. The truth liberates us 
The truth liberates us from self-centeredness. The truth liberates us from all forms of arrogance and ignorance. Indeed, this is the Christian way, and I believe that this is the human way. Therefore, let's join our efforts together to build a world in which injustice is replaced by justice, intolerance by tolerance, mutual acceptance and polarization by reconciliation. This is the human way. This is the way in which we Armenians all over the world are committed. May God bless you all. The National Council of Churches of Christ in the United States is meeting here in this city, and this day they have adopted a commemoration in honor and observance of the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. It is longer than I can read all of this evening. I will read some brief sentences from it. We are gathered with our sisters and brothers in the Armenian Orthodox Church and the wider Armenian community to give witness to the Armenian Genocide. We are also gathered with them to acknowledge their faith and resilience in the face of such adversity. We mourn the dead. We stand tonight among the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of those who were killed. We listen to the language of the Armenian people and to their great and proud heritage. We join in the prayers of their ancient church, asking for God's mercy upon the people and the nation that was the first in history to become Christian. Tonight, their forebears become our forebears. Their language becomes our language, and their prayers become our prayers. We find inspiration in the call of the Armenian people to stand against the evil of genocide wherever and whenever it is committed. In the last century, genocide has been committed all too often and in too many places. In the face of such evil, standing among our Armenian brothers and sisters, we affirm that our work to end genocide is not finished. Finally, we celebrate the resurrection of the Armenian people. The Christian life is about hope and the victory of life over death. Like Jesus Christ, who rose from the tomb to give life to the world, the Armenian people have risen from the ashes of genocide. They are a powerful witness to faith in the resurrection and a profound testimony to God's promise to remember those who take refuge in him. And let the church say, Amen. Vice President of the United States of America, the President of the Republic of Armenia, 
Your Holinesses, Catholicos Karakin II, Catholicos Aram I, Your Eminences and Excellencies, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, we are here this evening, still in the season of Easter, celebrating together with the Church in the whole world the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Being reminded also today that neither sin nor injustice nor death shall have the last word. In the Gospel of Matthew, in the last chapter, we read about the first witnesses to the resurrection. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. We commemorate today those who became witnesses to death. They became martyrs, witnesses of the truth. But tonight we also commemorate them as witnesses to life. They gave witness to the dignity and the meaning of life before their death, and today their lives and their death give testimonies to us, to call us to become witnesses to life in the midst of death and sin in our time. Gathered here in the National Cathedral, we recognize that the United States of America has become a home for many who have needed shelter. Hundred years after the Armenian genocide, brutal and violent, we know what happened. We know how many lost their homes, their family members, their freedom, their future. Some even were forced to denounce their faith. And we know how many lost their lives. We are commemorating a tragedy, a genocide, a disaster that happened to our one humanity. And the World Council of Churches, with its 350 member churches, representing half a billion Christians in more than 110 countries, studied carefully and named this crime genocide in 1983. Representing these churches in the solemn and significant events in Armenia two weeks ago, in the Holy Ichmat scene at the National Memorial site, I also had the privilege to participate in a forum of parliamentarians, experts in international law and politics, and historians. Together, we made a statement, read on April 24, by a woman surviving the genocide in Rwanda in 1995. It expressed our shared commitment to name crimes against humanity for what they are, and to do whatever we can to prevent such things as genocide to happen again. And we have to admit that such appeals are still needed. The centennial since the start of the Armenian genocide has now passed. And we should, with these acts of commemoration, also have passed the point when governments, including my own Norwegian government, continue to discuss whether what happened was a genocide. Our common moral sense tells us what it was. 
and based on the witnesses to truth, we should go further through acts of healing and reconciliation. That is what the world needs today, desperately. We honor the martyrs of the genocide of the Armenians and of other genocides, and we honor them as human beings, not only as victims. Their lives are holy to God, their creator. Their dignity is not reduced, but affirmed through their death in faithfulness and sacrifice. And you, the Armenian people of today, together with these martyrs, are witnesses to the truth. Even more, you are also witnesses to the life of your people and the power of God of life to create new life. We are honored to be with you in this solemn moment. In the Gospels, we learned how some men and women witnessed the brutal death of their master, becoming themselves victims of injustice as an outcome of human tactics and actions. And in the Gospel of Easter morning, we hear how some of these women came to mourn and pay respect to the one who died. But they were shocked, shocked by the unexpected encounter of the power of life, the encounter with Christ himself. And they were called to not be afraid, but to move others also to be witnesses of life. And in the reading of the many Armenian stories about the genocide, I'm struck by the significant task of the women. Many of the witnesses that survived to tell what happened were women. And many of those who brought the stories and the pictures of the genocide to the attention of the world were also women. Some of them missionaries, some of their names and pictures were displayed in the streets of Yerevan in the last weeks. They had to suffer to see that their husbands and their children were killed. Some of them also had to suffer to survive, to know, to remember, to carry on the pain but also to carry on the witness to the life of their people. We live in a world that is facing new levels of brutality, crimes against humanity, systems of injustice and poverty, lack of ability and willingness to overcome conflicts through political and diplomatic processes. Every day, thousands are fleeing from their homes in Syria and Iraq, close to where so many Armenians lost their lives 100 years ago. In another continent, the people of South Sudan are facing an ethnic war. In many continents, Christian sisters and brothers are becoming martyrs, killed for being Christians. And their faithfulness and their martyrdom unite us today. In many countries and parts of the world where our churches are present, they have to struggle day by day for a just peace. I am convinced from my many encounters with people who live in these circumstances that the great majority really want and pray for justice and peace, irrespective of their nationality, their ethnicity, their race, their faith, or political parties. The same hopes for justice and peace we hear in your country, from cities like Ferguson and Baltimore. All lives matter. Everywhere we can be inspired by these witnesses to life. We are not speaking in a superficial way of the evil in this world. 
We are not speaking in a superficial way of hope, but we are speaking in the name of our Jesus Christ, the resurrected. We are speaking the truth about both death and life. So the time has come for all of us, dear sisters and brothers, to be much more than bystanders, observing what is happening. But together with these martyrs and saints, to be ambassadors of justice and peace. And at an evening where also many countries in the world commemorate the 70 years after the end of World War II, let us together, people of all nations, people of goodwill, of all beliefs and religions, celebrate and explore the deep meaning of peace. Let us on this day commit ourselves to promote life and dignity of all, of those who were killed and those who survived, those who live today and those to come after us, facing threats our generation could on their future. Dear sisters and brothers, we are called to hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are called to not be afraid, not to be apocalyptic, crippled by cynicism or fatalism. We are called to be witnesses and ambassadors to life. Amen. Let us all say together, Lord have mercy. For peace in the whole world and for the stability of the Holy Church, let us ask the Lord. For all holy and orthodox bishops and Christian leaders, let us ask the Lord. For the life of the Catholicos of all Armenians, His Holiness Karakan II. For the life of the Catholicos of the Great House of Cilicia, His Holiness Aram I. For the heads of all the churches and for the salvation of their souls, let us ask the Lord. For teachers of the church, priests, deacons, altar servers, and all youth called to serve the church, let us ask the Lord. Lord for devout rulers and God-loving leaders, for military commanders and their forces, that the Almighty Lord will make them prevail in all wars against hostile powers, let us ask the Lord. Lord for seasonable weather, gentle rains, and abundant crops, let us ask the Lord. the great and mighty power of the Holy Cross to help us. Let us ask the Lord, Lord have mercy. And also for our true and holy faith, together let us ask the Lord, Lord have mercy. Let us commit ourselves and one another to the almighty Lord God, Lord have mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord our God as befits your great mercy. Let us all say together, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us lift up our hearts in prayer O Lord, our God, hear your voices and receive our requests, the lifting of our hearts and the words of our prayers as you sanctify this evening offering that we have prepared 
as a sweet fragrance for your pleasure. Almighty Lord, increase our faith, hope, love, and all manner of generous deeds, so that always leading a devout and disciplined life, day and night, according to your gracious will, we may be privileged to call upon you for our salvation and spiritual life and receive grace and mercy from you. And with gratitude, we all glorify the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit always and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be to all and with your spirit. Let us bow down before God. Lord, our God, as we bow down to you, we thank you for sending this long day peacefully on its way. Lord, we ask you to send us on our way through this evening and the coming night without sin and without stumbling. Let us remain steadfast in faith, in hope, and in love, always keeping your commandments, asking you for peace in the whole world, stability in your holy church, and salvation for ourselves. And so having received what we ask from you, we will always send up duly majestic glory in the highest to your all-powerful lordship, O Christ our God, now and always, and on to the ages of ages. Amen. Christ our God, you crown your saints with triumph, and you do the will of all who fear you, looking after your creatures with love and kindness. Hear us from your holy and heavenly palm by the intercession of the Holy Mother of God, and by the prayers of all your saints, especially the holy martyrs who gave their lives during the Armenian genocide for faith and for the homeland, whom we commemorate today. Hear us, Lord, and show us your mercy. Forgive, cancel, and pardon our sins. Make us worthy, thankfully, to glorify you with the Father and with the Holy Spirit now and always, and through the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs>